I'm, I'm going to try and represent the audience in this. And uh, after we do about 20, 30 minutes of, of my questions, uh, we want to open the floor up for you to ask your own questions if you haven't already talked about them. Um, I'm thinking that one of the biggest stumbling blocks with getting into social media for everybody here, including myself, is that it's simply overwhelming. You don't know where to start. Even though we're talking about Twitter, we're talking about Facebook, where is the best place for someone to start? And I'm just going to pass the mic over to you, give my voice a rest, and let you talk. Gary, what do you think? The best thing for somebody to do whenever they're starting is, is decide what you're looking for. Um, there's goals that you can have in social networking. You can try to get followers, you can try to raise money, you can try to communicate with your existing um, followers or existing people that are participating in your charity, but develop a goal and put it all on paper. And then start doing research on the social networking platforms that you need to be part of. You know, Twitter and Facebook may not be your best options. There may be other smaller niche options that would work much better for you to concentrate your time on. Lauren, what do you think? When I'm consulting with folks on social networking, I usually want to start them out with the big, the big ones, Twitter, Facebook, and a blog. Um, I think those three things can work together to make you a really good beginning online presence. There are, gosh, there are well over 200 social networks that I can just think of off the top of my head. I mean, you've even got your own. Yeah. <laughs> you made his own Friends of Brian Carter Network. Um, so you can make, you know, you can, there can be all kinds of niche networks, but those big ones are really important. And, um, and Facebook right now is growing at 600,000 people a day. So it's, it's really kind of a huge space. It's the elephant in the room that everybody really needs to be aware of and, and getting into, I think. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with both of those. I mean, for one, um, I totally agree with Gary that you got to start with a goal. Right? And then you got to look at how it, how are you going to quantify that goal? Um, you got to look for some ROI out of this because you have a limited amount of time and so on. It's also going to take you a certain amount of time to learn these networks. So try to figure out what the strengths are of that each one and how that's going to relate to what you want to do. Um, and it's funny because I, I, I keep forgetting I had that social network that I created because one of the things I do is I just keep trying all this new stuff just to. You know, you can call it early, early adopting or whatever, but unless you get out there and have some personal experience with this, it's going to be difficult for you to even relate to the person that you assigned to do it. Yeah, and that person is going to, you, you need to uh, break out a certain amount of time that is going to be devoted, you know, for all this new social networking stuff because it takes a decent, it takes a good amount of time, but I think it, it grows very slowly, and I think it's kind of dependent on what you're comfortable with. And Twitter is a great way to sort of dip your toe into the social uh, networking waters. Another question? Oh, yeah, I have a few. <laughs> I forgot the question. Um, well, I know that there's some big players out there. We saw some logos up on the screen a little while ago. We're talking about Twitter and Facebook mostly, but of course, there's MySpace, which Everything is evolving out there, but um, uh, I guess what I'd like to get a sense of is what the basic differences between these various social uh, instruments are. Okay, Lauren's nodding her head like she has an idea about that. <laughs> He's just begging for the microphone. Always. Um, I'd like to get a sense of, of like David is saying, Twitter is a, an easy step, it's, but it's very, very different than Facebook. And the return that you get from Twitter is a different kind of return than you get from these other things. So, Lauren, why don't you comment on that? I can't remember who said this, but it, so it wasn't my original idea. But um, the idea that Twitter is more about finding new people that you don't know. And Facebook is more about connecting with existing friends and then using that network to kind of work out. So. That's, a, that's a, one of the major differences. I think of all of the people that I, I'm friends with on Twitter, um, when I first started, there was only one person that I actually really knew. And then um, it really, it was a great tool for me to meet new people, so it's been good. 
Well, um, yeah, they all have different strengths. Like uh, on Facebook, you could create a fan page or a cause page or something like that. If you don't have a website or you want to send people there, you could you could create a Twitter account to reach all these new people and then guide them to that Facebook cause account, right? And then once those people sign up, then you can mail them. Um, that you you kind of need a, a bigger strategy, I think. Um, but they all are different pieces. They all have different strengths. Um, so you, I don't know. You're gonna have to construct some kind of strategy and to get them all together. Right, and 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 they all need and they all work together. I mean, it's the the real strength of a good social networking plan is that you're using all of the tools. You maybe YouTube and you're linking back to all of your other networks and your Twitter is linking to your Facebook and your Facebook is linking to, to everything that you're doing out there. Well, for example, if you have a fundraising event and you want to shoot a, a relatively short video of that and you want to inform people that you have contacts with on Twitter or Facebook, your Facebook posse, um, you can send them directly to YouTube or feature that on your Facebook site. Is that right? Right. So they all have a part to play in this. The, the pie hasn't gotten any larger, but there are a whole lot more pieces of it today. Let's let's see uh, what are some of the nonprofit social media stars that are really doing it up right out there. Has anybody run across uh, not yeah nonprofits in the social media realm that are making things happen? Brian? Yeah. Um, I tried to hand out some of the this sheet that I brought that's got some nonprofit success stories. And one of them. Have this up here. Yeah, if you need more, they're, they're up here. Um, there was one that's called Tweets Giving, which was uh, they, they tried to raise ten thousand dollars in forty eight hours to build a schoolhouse in Tanzania, and they actually ended up raising eleven thousand. Um, so they did this via Twitter. Uh, there was another one that was a human rights organization. Uh, that was kind of more like blogging focused. And one of the cool things they did is they ended up getting a lot of links to their blog, just a huge, and that has huge search engine value, so they'll get great search engine ranking out of that long term. Uh, and then this guy, Danny Brown, is doing this new thing where every month this year, he's got a different charity. And he's using this thing called Chip In, which works with PayPal. So you can take these donations, it's free. All that's free, you know. Um, PayPal takes a percentage, but uh, Chip In is free, I believe. Might be another percentage, but it's really easy to set up, and then people can donate uh, really quickly online. The tweetsgiving.org, the way the word gets out, if you don't know about Twitter, I donated to tweetsgiving.org because Brian tweeted about it. And I follow him, and I thought, oh, this is cool. So I went to the website from the link in the Twitter, donated, and then I did something that we call retweet which is you take a, a, a Twitter that someone has done and you just send it out again and usually give the person the attribution that you got it from in the first place. So so I got it from my friend and then I sent it on to my, my version, all of my Twitter friends and followers. You know, one thing we haven't mentioned that people may not realize is that Twitter posts or tweets are limited to 140 characters. So they're very, very short in nature. And some people just say, I'm sitting down and I'm going to eat dinner now. It's about that long, right? I mean, right. And that's what makes it so palatable, though. They're not long, involved things. You can just have a presence in someone else's world with little real comments. Um, I don't know that everybody wants to hear what you're having for dinner. There might be more interesting things you can do with that, but they're very short little snippets of coffee. And the other thing that's important to realize is that you choose who you follow. So if, if there are people out there who are just saying what they're having for dinner and you're not interested in that, you just don't follow those people. So you find the people that you're interested in and are doing things that you're interested in. Yeah, and the other thing, like um, was mentioned earlier with uh, the Zappos guy, when, when we were starting this KBuzz, uh, or sorry, this tweets giving thing, this, this uh, marketing company, KBuzz contacted me and um, we, with a few other people, tried to get this guy, Chris Brogan, to tweet about it, because he, had, at the time, I think, had like 150,000 followers or something. And, you know, if it's, it's because it's so short, um, it's almost like a pitch. You know, if you pitch somebody their elevator speech, it's not an imposition.